I lived with my mother who was an addict, my father who was an addict, very abusive situations. While my mother had us, she just couldn't manage, you know, with her drug addiction and and I was being sexually abused and we were just neglected. Like we were in a house for about five days alone before they come and got us out. And so I ended up in foster care and um, I left home when I was 15. I had my son and so I've been using probably since I was about 12 years old. I just didn't, I didn't want to live. I had no desire to live life. So I spent about it's been about 26 years in active addiction. It began with alcohol, then to cocaine, then to crack cocaine, and then to heroin use. I used heroin for about 16 years. And so I had been incarcerated 36 times. I've done about seven and a half years incarcerated, which did not work at all. So the last time that I was incarcerated, I was getting ready. Like I was about two days away from heading out to prison and I ended up, um, they ended up pulling me back in and giving me a new plea and it was drug court and uh, treatment. So I ended up in treatment in John D. Good, and I was there for 90 days. And while I was there, Andy Bailey from the Sober Living House come in and gave a lead, a somewhat of a lead, and, uh, and I just liked what he had to say. I mean, it was a Christian facility, and his story just rang bells for me. So I tried the Sober Living, which I struggled with it because I had lived on the streets for seven years. I had lived in active addiction in the most chaotic ways imaginable, selling drugs and so I probably shouldn't say that on camera, but I was very much had the jail mentality, but I was also in drug court, which they focus on criminal thinking, cognitive thinking, therapy, like all these different th resources, just like I, I was willing, I was ready. So, um, I ended up, Lou ended up giving me a spot at the mission cause I was just really struggling with authority and just lots of different things over there and just it was too much responsibility all at once so I come here and man I don't know if it was being back where this is like what I come from you know I was living in tents I was I mean the worst of the worst so I was comfortable in that aspect but then I had to be comfortable with having so much love and support like I can give love, but it's really hard. it was really hard for me to receive love. And these people just love me and love me and love me no matter how, you know, however I acted or the things I would say. But the most valuable thing I think was, well, not just the support was, I could hear God being spoken everywhere I went. You know, I mean, devotions and Bible studies and it was just everywhere. While I was in treatment, my son had been stabbed and had been, he overdosed and he was on life support for about two weeks. And they was about to pull the plug on him and something turned around for him. And man, it was just like, it was really time to really get it together. I had to break that cycle because this has been going on for, I mean, about two or three generations and it's only gotten worse. And so, I, listen, I, I, I stay clean every day because you have to lead by example, okay? I, I, I can't um, use and tell my child not to use. He's, he's done been to prison and he's almost died and, and he's, he's literally followed in every footstep of mine. So I've tried to turn around every, every aspect of my life, the, the way, the violence, the, I had very violent tendencies. So I, I, I believe if I just keep moving forward that my son will fall in line as well. He's fallen in line so far. I was told all my life that I was going to be my mother, and I believe that. I thought that I was just going to die alone in a rundown motel of a heroin overdose, and not nobody would even care, you know, to show up at my funeral because that's what I was worth. So, to be, to be, to go to, I take so much pride in coming to work, and I give it a hundred percent every day. I don't miss no days. There's no cop out, please. And I'm paying my own rent and, and I've got other goals established for myself and I'm going to keep moving forward with that. So it just feels good to not be the st statistic, you know, I don't, I didn't want to be that. And that's what I was told I was going to be, so.